Samuel has a great question. I won't read it all out, but I'll just paraphrase. Samuel is asking about using brick uh to create the secondary air part within the stove he's also asking about the sizes of those of those air openings and so let's go over a little bit of that while we're here um so the air inlets both primary and secondary are both roughly 10 percent of chimney cross-sectional area so if you have a six inch round chimney that's going to be roughly and i'm just approximating but roughly three inches square for each of those openings in my tests secondary air is actually ever so slightly smaller i want to say it's 9.82 or something like that belgian gulch might know those numbers offhand because he's been playing with them a lot more than i have recently um but it's it's roughly 10% for each opening, 10% for the primary and 10% for the secondary. It works out to about three inches square of, of um, area, cross-sectional area. So in millimeters, I think, don't quote me on this because I'm bad at metric, but I think that's about 15 millimeters uh, square. Doesn't sound right. Centimeters? No, it's gotta be millimeters. Hmm, yeah, no, that's right. Uh, or maybe that's right. I don't know. So like I said, I'm bad at metric. Um, <laughs> sorry, everybody. Maybe someone who's a little more savvy with the math can, can help me out there. But yeah, roughly 10% of your chimney's cross-sectional area is what we're looking for for secondary and primary air. Um, now, with that said, Samuel's main question was with regards to using something other than metal for the secondary air. And he was talking about coming up with a way to craft that using bricks or you know masonry of some type and um looks like i dropped oh i'm back it looks like so maybe it's gonna work so he was talking about using bricks or masonry to create the secondary air and samuel very astute observation he says you know the one big thing is going to be durability how am i going to deal with that i'll have to be very careful loading the wood and so that's number one reason why i don't recommend doing that it's not to say it's impossible but the number one reason not to do that is because that metal secondary air part serves a very important physical function just with regards to where and how it's formed and that is that it kind of acts as a gate to the back of wall of the stove if you push wood all the way to the back wall of the stove you really wreck that um, combustion profile that we work so hard to achieve the wood needs to stay a certain distance from the back wall and a certain distance from the port in both the riserless core and in a standard batch box and so my pre-port secondary air tube that was one of my primary considerations was to have it act as and irons essentially um, Oh, thanks, Tim. Roughly 20-ish square centimeters. There you go. That's better. That's that's better. So, um, uh, so that you know, that's an important function of that vertical part of that secondary air is to keep your wood in the right place and to keep you from pushing ashes and coals into the port. And it's really important that it does that. So, for the most part, that's the number one reason why I don't like the idea of using ceramic back there because it's probably going to get just smacked by wood at some point and and broken but the second one is also pretty important and that's that we really want the secondary air tube to preheat the secondary air and deliver air that's almost ready for combustion right at the very back of the burn chamber if you use ceramic or bricks for that secondary air delivery you will eventually get it hot enough that it is preheating the air but it's going to take quite some time and one of the main goals is trying to get out of the dirty beginning parts of the burn as quickly as possible it's one of the reasons why these rocket mass heaters are so efficient and so clean is because we can go from kindling and smoke you know a little smoky cool fire to a hot completely combusting fire in very short time and a big part of that is a metal secondary air tube and in my opinion insulated firebox um so while it's possible and you know if you're somewhere where you just that's all you have access to i would encourage you to experiment but i don't think 
it's anywhere near as good as the metal ones. And I've often said, you know, even if you just have plain steel and you're going to replace it every, you know, twice a season or whatever, I still think it's worth it because there's ways to do it that are pretty simple to replace and it's a fairly cheap and accessible material. Um, so there's the answer to that one.